Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Jazz Strata here, and welcome to my very Celtic Festival 2019 vlog. Oi, boy, that was a fun day. Went there with my folks, my mum and my dad, and yeah, we had a blast. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. <laughs> Oh, looks like they've got a few more stalls here this year. Yes, why not? Yes! over there. Red long road. What did the red long robe on?
demonstrating here is why in medieval armies we didn't actually have many guns. Because <laughs> swords work better. <laughs> Here we go, one more go. Uh, he's going to see if he can get that fire behind me while I talk. My name is Greg and I am the captain of the Company of the Cross. These are my guys. We're a group of about 10 men usually. We've got a few short today. Um, we are a 15th century living history society. Most of you would know us as a reenactment group. One of the things that we do differently to most groups is that it's not necessarily all about the century living history society. Who's heard of Richard III? That great hunchback bloke that we just found in a car park a little while ago. Well, to bring it into context, we are actually the soldiers under the command of and fighting for Richard III. We are heading towards Bosworth Field and we are going to win. Richard, the one true king, is going to live long and prosper. Please don't ruin the end of the movie for me. <laughs> so, why did we choose the losing side? Because the Yorkists are the rightful kings of both England and Scotland. That's right, you scabby Celts. We are your rightful rulers, the English. Our standard, the cross of St George, flies high above you. Now, we do actually value most of you because you were great mercenaries. We hired you and fought, you fought for us all the time. But we are Yorkist. Richard III was Yorkist. We fought against the Lancastrians. Now, in the day, they didn't call it the War of the Roses. They called it the Cousins' War because it was a family feud for the crown. Okay, we're Yorkist. To anyone with Irish heritage, Richard of York, Richard III's father, actually owned massive amounts of land and he was the steward of Ireland. And he was actually popular. They didn't see as an Englishman ruling and lording over them. He was actually very popular. He looked after the people on his lands and uh, treated people very well. So the Irish tended to fight with the Yorkists, killing Scotsmen. Yeah! Hey. Just check who you're sitting next to. Down the Irish, down with the Scots. Anyway, the Scots generally fought with the French. We all know the French are the worst people on the planet. <laughs> Alright, so basically a little bit of what we're doing. I told you I'm the captain of this group. Most of you would look at this suit and go straight away, he's a knight. I'm not a knight. The character that I represent is not even a noble. I'm not of noble birth. I'm a commoner. My historical character is the son of a stonemason, so we built walls. But I didn't want to break walls with Dad, so I went off to become a soldier because the pay rate was better. I got good at it, I survived, I bought better equipment, and I eventually got to the point where I could hire my own men and hire myself out. So we are known as a company. There was no medieval army, so what the kings and the nobles did was raise the companies and employ the companies. So it wasn't gather the army, it was raise the companies and see who can employ the most companies as quick as possible before we end up on the battlefield. So that's a little bit about well, how the Go behind me please, works. I'm recording. Go and behind. Gunner, Tim, is my second in command. He is lieutenant, so I'm captain, he's lieutenant. Then, on the end, Regan step forward. Regan is our sergeant. Now Regan's in charge of the soldiers. We give the orders, he makes sure they do it, or he kicks their butt with that big stick. Guys, please well, all lift your sticks up nice and high for the guys to see. These are the weapon of the day. Now you want to see movies where they're all the soldiers run out and they're all waving their swords. You know, you've got to keep load of rubbish. God's wallop. Their swords were nicely tucked into their belts where they belong. We fight with big pointy sticks. Whole arms. The sword was a secondary weapon. Unless you're me, I'm an officer, so I fight with this. It's a little bit different. Again, Tim has both weapons, the gun and the halberd. So we line up. We also have archers in our company. We shoot you a lot with a bunch of arrows, fire a few guns in your face, and then we come closer and stab you with pointy sticks. <laughs> Lay the gun down if you can. So, 
gentlemen, form up. Company, Charles Pikes. So this gives you an idea if you can imagine five to 10,000 of these guys all in a line pointing at a big pin cushion. Company, forward. Now imagine if this was a full rank coming at you and all you've got is a pointy stick to stab him back. The noise was absolutely horrendous. Okay, I'm going to get this to split off into two teams. Okay, what I'm going to do, ball in. Gentlemen, charge your pikes. Advance. Oh. Retreat. That just gives you a little bit of an idea of what it's like. Now, in the movies, you'll see it's all mad, hard swinging. It actually wasn't like that. The battlefield wasn't guys trying to club each other to death. And that's one of the things you'll see in a lot of reenactment. The sword work, it's really just pounding on each other, relying on the armour to stop all the weapons or relying on the shields. It's actually not how they fought. He's got a very pointy stick and he's very deliberately trying to find those gaps. So it's a lot slower and a lot more controlled than it looks. But then if you can imagine two sides of 10,000 men coming at each other, it looks incredibly chaotic, but it's actually not. All right, Regan, step forward. James, step forward. With your helmet. James, defend yourself. So again, you can see how they use these like a tool. The hooks and the blades, hook! The hooks and the blades have a purpose. Alright. No paddle, two handed. James, defend yourself. Oh! James, attack back. Again, you would have heard that nice meaty thunk. That's why we wear armour. So that gives you a little bit of an idea how these weapons can be used. They can be used at length, like a long spear, or they can be used like a kayak paddle, and you're using every part of the weapon uh, to take out your opponent. Uh, Taylor, long sword. <laughs> Against these swords, all I'm going to do is ruin an expensive sword and waste my energy. That's how these are Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
So I do run them a little short bout for you, and now I'm exhausted because I'm old. <laughs> um, so again, you can see, even with training and knowledge of how to use these weapons, the fight doesn't last long. Again, you see in the movies, these guys that are fighting for 15 minutes, swords swishing, blocking every blow, looking wonderful and dashing. Load of rubbish. <laughs> there was skill involved, but basically we're hired killers. My aim is not to fight him for the next 15 minutes to make it look good. I'm trying to take him out. Not necessarily kill him. I just need to injure him. And he's trying to take me out. And even with all of this clobber on, it doesn't take long. The difference is wearing this means I may get injured. Highly unlikely I'll get killed. If you're not wearing this, and you're lighter armoured, you're going to die. Okay. Uh, James, sword and dagger. This is a different style of weaponry. This would be something you're a little more familiar with. But instead of the wooden shield, which was obsolete, those big pole arms and axes, they'll just destroy a wooden shield. So you can see the small fist shield that Regan is holding. Uh, put it on your fist because James is going to try and kill it. Raven, you alright? I don't think he realises he's bleeding down his face, but look, he's okay. today to show us what we do. That's a little taste. We're over in our encampment over by the fence over there. Throughout the day, come over. Somebody will come and talk to you, hand you a sword, hand you a helmet, have a bit of a look at what we've got, talk to you about what we do. I hope that's giving you a little bit of a pinch, and I hope it's also giving you a little bit of a question over what you tend to see in, sadly, most documentaries and definitely the movies. A lot of what you know about history is wrong. Best historical show on television is the kids show, Horrible Histories. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Oh no! You know those horrible Scots I was talking about that we were all? Here come the flaming Jacobites. Hey! Wait and see. This is the best bit. Yes. Yes. Huh? So much for sword fight. Well, last year they did a lot more. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My lord, ladies and gentlemen, how are we this afternoon? Are we good? Yes! Are we excited? Yes! Are we ready to see thundering hooves? Yes. Are we ready to see breaking lances? Yes! Are we ready to see blood? Yes! <laughs> These people putting their lives on the line for you guys, and you want to see blood. That's tough. Ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, adjusting nights. Uh, we'll be here this, uh, this afternoon twice. Uh, first of all, we'll be doing a demonstration of, uh, of the uh, jousting practice, the sort of skill and arms that uh, knights would do to practice for both the huh? battle and for the jousts. Uh, no, this is the same one. Uh, before that, we used to practice by getting about 100 
Yeah, because the breaking stuff right next to us. Hey. Secondly, we have Sir Darrell. Hey. We have the Lady Lisa. Beautiful horse. So our, 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 our making sure the horses are in the same frame of mind as they are. Same horse as last year's? No, it's a nurse, but she hasn't been here before. Ah, so you were right. Yeah. Uh, I compete on events and she's my event Ah. So, how many people in the audience here have seen a joust before? Oh, this is good to see. You guys know what's happening. Okay, quick question. Do you remember my jokes from last year? No? Yes, That's great. Somewhat. I can use the same ones again. <laughs> The 
should be like the start of just a few minutes. Mind you, they're pretty spectacular while they're just riding around, aren't they? <laughs> ah, there it is. This is not something you see every day. Un unless you need it, which makes you probably do. <laughs> Terrifying that must have been had that running down at you while you were standing on the ground with your spear and shield. <laughs> okay, here she comes with Lady Hawk. Lances down. One, two, three. Four points there for Sasha the Green Knight. Coming now to Spear the Boar. for a few mats. Lady 
So close. So close to that last one. So four points there for the eight of the special green knot. Nice slice there. Well done. That was cabbage. She impaled it. Yeah. 
play ladies and gentlemen. We will be very simple, because I'm a fairly simple guy. What we're going to do is we are going to score one point if they break the lines, and two points if they shatter it. Now the shatter will be fairly clear. Uh, what we're using is they are bolts of chip lances. Uh, the sort of blow that would have knocked the guy from his horse back in the medieval period uh, will actually shatter the lance. Also wood, as I'm not sure you know, is actually very strong laterally, but you can break it easily the other way. So if we shatter it, that's what we're really after. That's that square on hit. Berry 2019 Celtic Festival video. Unfortunately, Sasha the Green's horse didn't want to joust, so they had to postpone it to the later um, slot. But unfortunately, we didn't stay for the second part of the joust. But hey, I got to the first part, so. <laughs> anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like if you did. And until next time, this is Jazz Stretto saying, see you later on Jazz Stretto. Let's play. <laughs>